we good from our end. We good. With that being said, hey, Shalom. 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 Like to say, call Allah. Yahweh, 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 We'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who taught us this truth. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the occupants laboring in this truth in all sincerity and faith. Uh, just back in another classroom setting, setting Great Millstone Dallas, so I'm here with a few esteemed guests, the brother, uh, the, the elder Nava. From uh, Great Millstone, Memphis, and the brother, uh, you can say your name. Omar you Bar. Uh, that's a Bay Area camp. Yo, yeah, got the Bay Area in the camp. So, yo, yeah, in another classroom setting, we're going to go into the account of the Bereans and just basically talking about dil diligence, exhortation for the body. Uh, Great Millstone, that's one thing that we're known for, starting with our, our head apostles, the bishops, the elders. We're known for being a camp of diligence. Even though these other bug outs, they may disagree with us. Even Vocab Malone, he says, I believe y'all are the most sincere camp. And it just comes through that process of just uh, diligence, toiling and studying in the scriptures and, and coming out with the, the, the proper break, breakdowns, you know, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So uh, with all being said, we'll just go through the, the scriptures and, and Lord willing this to edify the body. So we'll start off in uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 14. Prophet Shah. 2 Timothy 3. Uh, yeah, whoever did it. Yeah. My God. Okay. So uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But continue thou the things which thou hast learned. Right, because first off, in order to learn this truth, there has to be a teacher. When you read in what Romans, the 10th chapter, that's how ultimately you get this word. And of course, that process of something like Yahweh Shai, or like the scripture says in Revelation 3, where Yahweh Shai opens up and expands your understanding. But we have to continue in the things that we've learned. We've seen bug outs that came in for X amount of time, and then they got offended at something in them within the doctrine. They don't call them a name, and now they out in the woodwork, so to speak. So we don't want to fall into those examples, you know. Right. That's why it's important to be rooted in what you believe in. Because Jake coming into this thing for various reasons, ulterior motives, but it, it all starts with the word and establishing that belief. Okay. Read it again. Second Timothy chapter three verse fourteen. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. It has been assured of. Right, it has been assured of. And that comes through that process of studying, meditating on the scriptures through faith, through your experience of actually applying these things to your life. Mm. Okay? And we know we have a more sure word of prophecy, like it says in Peter. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're preaching a doctrine that's centered around prophecy, which the Most High is allowing to manifest more and more as the Spirit is put on His men to go out and speak. Okay? Go ahead. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them, Ain't knowing who we learn. That's why we always start off the videos, what? Giving double honors to the men that taught us, man. Because you got a lot of disrespectful niggas out here. Facts. They don't like to pay homage and tribute, so to speak, to the men that brought them into something. You came into a building that was already assembled. Okay? So a lot of Jake need to have a, a higher level of appreciation also of what they come into. Yep. And that should reflect in how you deal with this word. Right. All of those breakdowns of revelation. Second Ezra's, the, the, the feathers and all of that. Mm. There were men who labored and, and, ha and put those things up. Now you have people who benefit from those breakdowns. Exactly. Okay? But they, 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 they go backwards. Like yeah. Adam, what's the dude? Adam Abbott, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Watchman for Israel. They did that Revelation 13 breakdown. And pretty much they went through the breakdown, all right, up until the point where they got to the image of the, the mark, the way we break it down. Right. But then they get to the, the, the haragma part, and it's this, nah, it's that, y'all exactly. wrong. Exactly. Niggas, man. You want to remix. That's a nigga. For the things that's not appealing to this world, guys want to remix, you know, but they're not sure. They don't have an appreciation for those that talk them. Nigga come eating, and, uh, this cold. Nigga, we'll yeah. warm it up. Yeah, exactly. Right. You come, you, nigga, at least you eating. Exactly. Warm it up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, oh, we dead. We'd have been those dead bodies, man. If yeah. the, the spirit had been placed on our teachers to, to, to put this word on YouTube and wake us up, man. Mm -hmm. You know? But it's all through the, the will of the Lord, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. I got one real quick. Yep. <clears throat> this is John 4, 38. I sent you to reap that were in their own, ye bestowed no labor. Other men labor, and ye are entering to what their labor. Mm. Right. Other men labored and we've entered into other men's labor. Yeah. So that means you should have Ooh. a level of appreciation. Let me read this in the NLT. How you deal with the doctrine. Really furthering and expounding on what you've been taught. Yes. Not going off and remixing into something else. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, John 4 and 38 NLT. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. 
others had already done the work and now you will get to gather the harvest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get to gather the harvest, you know. Mm -hmm. Often with the apostles labor for years when they weren't even on camera, so to speak, yeah. you know, and we get to come in at the last part, mm -hmm. you know, where the word has already been broke, all the breakdowns is out there, you know, it's been laid out plain for us. So there's no excuse not to be diligent, not to be studying, not to be putting up videos. That's why Apostle Howard always in the spirit telling brothers that we need to be doing these videos. Right. Because we're like the Church of Berea in a sense. I was thinking of that great millstone. We're known for that 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 diligence, man. And always toiling and studying the scripture. That's one thing right. that these guys can't lay any charge on us when it comes to dealing with this word, man. You yeah. know, even when they when they uh are saying anything slanderous toward us, I know you had the one group um what's the ones that got mad because I uh Nate took the picture down. I forgot the name of that. Believers group. of the way or believers of the way, the water. But you know, they pretty much had to even acknowledge us the fact that we studied. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah, we know y'all know all the scripture, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? But they got on us saying, uh, for saying we know 100% of the truth. But just to say that, bro, Yo, you got people that are naysayers that don't even acknowledge the fact that we get into the word and we go precept upon precept. Right. This is actually the verse he quoted. Yeah, we know precept upon precept. We get that. So even the naysayers have to acknowledge it. You know? That's right. But I do got a precept for you. Go ahead. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 11. And it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is a Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, like that John 4. Right. You know what I'm saying? We've entered into un other man's labors. Mm -hmm. It was Yahweh Shai that initially is the, it is Yahweh Shai that initially is the foundation of this thing of ours. That's right. Verse 12. Oh, so like nah, go, continue, continue. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Hey, that's what's happening. Every man's word is being mm -hmm. manifest. Or did you say work or work? Word? Every man's work. Yep. You know, we see him who has the truth and who <clears throat> bullshit and <clears throat> pushing gimmicks and false narratives and false doctrines, man. Mm -hmm. You know, all the things starting with our apostles and elders and bishops have been saying 15, 20 years ago, we're actually seeing it play out in its fullness, man. Mm -hmm. All these certain counts breaking apart, falling off. Through. You know, through. And of course, <coughs> the thing that we, the Apostle Har always keeps us in the spirit to address the Karagma, man. Right. And everybody's trying to find a way to address exactly. it right in their own little sneaky own way. way. Because right. yep. they don't really ultimately want to pay homage to the men that set the foundation. That's it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Come. It says, for every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So just going into the point, we've entered into other man's foundations, but we want to make sure we're building according to the, the blueprint that's already been laid. Yep. Because if it's any other type of way, that day is going to be able to reveal it, just like you said. And we got to be on point for real, because that fire coming, which is that persecution. Mm -hmm. So we got to right. really be about what we what, what we proclaim out on those highways and byways, that's man. Right. This ain't no weekend warrior, you know. This is what we're supposed <clears throat> to be about. And we're going to have to openly, before this world, defend Yahweh Shah through these scriptures, you know. So that's why it's important to really lock in to, to what we're supposed to be about, mm -hmm. you know? That's right. But uh, you want to go back? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm going verse 14 again. It says, But continue thou the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, mm -hmm. and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Right, because we were reborn into this faith as newborn babes. Mm. You know, weaned off of the milk, you know? Go ahead. If it says in that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Being delivered out of the greatest destruction ever known in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, where it talks about in Daniel 12, like we went into last night, Michael the Archangel is going to have to come in the midst. Mm. So that's what it's ultimately about. You know, working towards that perfection, which when Yahweh Shah comes, that's when we're going to get that perfection. The changed right. bodies. Yeah. Not having to study and all of that no more. All right. We're working towards that, right? Okay. Yep. That's We're transitioning into the new covenant. Just to throw a shot at these things. Yep. And that's what the hundred percent is, man. Hundred percent truth is, you know, the things that make us wise into salvation. That's it. They want to go into the things that are, you know, too hard for men. Right. Exactly. You right. know. But nah, man. We we everything that's uh, pertains to salvation has been revealed. All right, to the servants of the Lord Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shah. 
It says, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shaka. They used to call us faith based Israelites. Right. How we know with, with the 12 tribes, so if that's accurate or not. Ultimately, it's through faith. Of course, we can go through the process of prophecy, certain history, mm -hmm. things of that nature. But ultimately, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's the spirit itself that bears yeah, with us, with our spirit, yeah. that we're the children of the Most High. This is a thing of faith, first and foremost. Yes, we believe that Yahweh Shah died and resurrected. Okay? Because ultimately, it's going to take that degree of belief to uh, allow us to withstand all of this persecution that's going to come down the line. Yeah, but you know, the scripture say the just shall live by what? Faith. 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 That's right. So this is not a thing of, of works, because we will be done within the works of the law. We do keep the law to the best of our ability as a showing of faith. Right. But this thing is a thing of faith, ultimately. Right. You know? yeah. right. Belief. Belief in the message. Right, that's right. Belief in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's really at the forefront. You know, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, of course, but that resurrection, believing on that, yes, having man. faith in that, really, that makes you immortal. Man. Yo. If you believe that, what, 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 what could you, what, you, could, you shouldn't doubt nothing at you that point. You don't fear nothing in that. <laughs> it's, it's carnally yeah. that Esau or anybody can yeah. do, man. Yeah. You know? Because we fear the Heavenly Father, ultimately, you know? Yep. But continue. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. Mm-hmm. And it's profitable for doctrine, right? The way you teach, that's what the doctrine is. Mm. All right, go ahead. For reproof, for correction, right? A lot of guys don't like to be corrected. This book is a book of correction. Everybody has to be held accountable. Men, women, children. <laughs> you know, there's no respect of persons when it comes to the Most High and His right. Son. Well, that's right. The, oh, so like, nah, go ahead. That's the prophecy in Revelation 11. Going into, you know, uh, when you go into the two witnesses, it talked about, generally speaking, um, how there was a reed that was given unto the angel where it was supposed to measure measure the church. Right. You know, when that reed is going into the scriptures, name before correction, you know. So you got the house of, the, of faith that's going to be corrected in the last days. Right. That's all I was saying. That's why a lot of uh, so-called Israelites, Christians, whatever the case, they like to pick and choose what they deal with right. when it comes to this Bible. Because this is a harsh book, man. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can get it if they're not lining up with the will of the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right, for instruction in righteousness. That's been the, the, the major plight of you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's not a financial issue. We always say, ultimately, it's a spiritual problem that's plaguing us. But ultimately, we don't have any instruction in righteousness. That's it. But the Lord has given that gift of faith to the elect, and we're trying to, we're trying to find our way, so to speak. You know, yeah. through our imperfections in these, in these bodies. All right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 17, that the man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai may be perfect. Right. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's what we're being prepared for, to be perfected in Yahweh Shai, to be thoroughly furnished into doing all good works. Okay? So it all starts with that belief. And belief, you know, faith cometh by hearing, like the scripture says, you know, by reading, searching the scriptures. So we're going to see right here. Years. Can you get that uh, that, that St. John 5 and Yeah, that's right. Uh, this St. John 5 and 39. It says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Mm. And they shall be you. Right. And they which testify of me. Right. Which testify of me. Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of me. Which the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Abba Shah, is what? The spirit of prophecy, man. Yeah. That's why prophecy is at the centerpiece. It's at the core of the doctrine, man. Mm -hmm. So through searching the scriptures... They testify of Yahweh Shah. He's a he was a living embodiment of everything that's written in the word. Man. Right. He said, Behold, I come in the Bible of the book, it is written in me. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So when we search the scriptures, that's how we come into the mind of Yahweh Shah. Mm. Right. Yeah. You know? That's right. More and more and more. You know, and until we perfect it, till our bodies are changed, it's always something to learn. I know Apostle Gabar always says that it's always something new. That's why the apostles, they still at the high level of studying because it's always something new to learn mm -hmm. and apply to your life because we're ever growing. We're dealing with living water. This is a living document. This is not the Egyptian book. Of the, this is not a dead <laughs> book, you know? These right. words are faithful and true. That's right. Yeah, all the mother philosophies ain't speaking. They ain't speaking mm -hmm. at all. Yep. They ain't speaking and hitting on nothing, man. Nothing. Nothing. This is this, this right in the mix. This is this on time. Right. This is on go time right now. Right. right. All right. So I never don't have nothing to talk about when it comes to the Egyptian guys and all that shit. Right. All he could talk about is the Bible. Because mm. that other stuff ain't really. It ain't like mm. you do a video on that. People ain't really yeah. tapping in. But if yep. you say Israelites, yep. 
People were like, yeah, let me, they, either they want to see us get confounded or they, you know. Yeah, it's, it's drawing people <laughs> it's in. Drawing people this, in. This is what's drawing people in, yeah. man, you know. But uh, was that it on that? Yeah. Okay, so let's go into uh, Acts the 17th chapter. Order. You can read it if you feel uh, Verse 4, it mm -hmm. said, and ye will not come to me that ye may have life. Yeah. Because your house shines the truth, the way in what? Life. Life, right. And a lot of guys don't understand that's the only way to ultimately get to the heavenly father. You can't go in no other door. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Or right. you'll be a thief and a robber. And a robber. It, you gotta it. come in through the straight gate. A lot uh -huh. of these bug outs too, once they mm. uh, put off the doctrine of Yahweh Shah, what's the first thing they stop using? The name. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ultimately they're already dead at that point, man. Because that's how we live, you know, through Yahweh mm -hmm. Shah. Mm -hmm. And ultimately through through sounding that name, praying in that name, having faith in that name. Mm -hmm. And what that name embodies, that rank, that authority, you know, what he was uh, uh, prophesied to do, you know. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. The first thing you learn coming in is the name, and when you out, first thing you lose <laughs> is the name. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Mm. But uh, we'll go ahead and kind of get the main point of the lesson, this narrative in Acts the 17th chapter, if somebody can start a team about the shot. And this is a good read, the whole chapter, you know. Yep. Acts 17 and 10, Paul and Silas in Berea. Mm -hmm. It says, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by, Silas by night unto Berea. And if someone could look up that word Berea, Bob Bashai, do that. Yep, I got it. Um, the word is Beroia. All right. It says, well watered. A city in Macedonia near Pella at the foot of Mount Bermius. Well watered is what it means. Yeah. So like I said, it reminds me of a great millstone, our church, so to speak, man. You know, the, we're well watered. And if someone can hold that Psalms, the first chapter, we'll get that next. If you want to just read 11, then we'll get Psalms. Read 11 and Acts 17. Oh, my, my bad. This is Acts 17 and 11. Proverbs or Psalms? Can I get the Psalms, Psalms 1? 1? Okay. Yep. Acts 17 and 11. Uh, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. So it's talking about the Bereans. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Because Paul and Silas went to them as well. You know? mm -hmm. These are all scattered Israelites too. Yep. It's not talking about the other nations, you so-called Christians. These were Israelites that were scattered and you know, being called these names by where they dwelled at that particular time. Continue. Right. Mm -hmm. It says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So even guys that's watching us, whether you come out on the other side, whether you're watching the videos, this is the mindset you have to have, man. Right. You're supposed to have your Bible out, taking notes. You're supposed to go back home on your own independent study, going back into the scriptures, looking up the words, you know, just putting the dots together, so to speak. Because ultimately, like I'm going to get into, we, you, we all have to be fully persuaded in our own mind that this mm -hmm. is the truth, okay? But uh, just to uh, bring out that. Yeah. that uh, Brother, want to make a point? Go ahead. You got yeah, it. when it said, use that word noble, it's talking about nobility, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that those who are in that studious spirit, they're, they're focused on the kingdom. Right. And what you notice with a lot of Israelite groups is not all of them are focused on the kingdom of heaven being established on earth. Right, a lot of them, they focus on building something here. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you talk about Great Millstone and those that in the likewise doctrine, they're in the mindset that, hey, man, we're focused on the world to come. That's right. They're, they're in a noble mindset. That's right, the know. rulership mentality like we always go into. And if someone want to uh, grab that word, noble. Um, I got it. It's Eugenus. So Eugene. Mm -hmm. good. All right. <laughs> eugenic, like yeah, eugenics. Eugenics. Yeah, right. Right, right. Not, right. Because they're trying to basically, you want, you want the noble, crop. you want the cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Right. Yep, the Which noble. The Lord is with that ultimately, man. The elect. That's how it's going to play out with the elect and the kingdom of heaven being established, man. Yeah. The Lord is only dealing with the nobles. Yep. Okay? There's a particular DNA strand that ain't going to make it on that. Right. God, they, they get cut off right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's heavy, right? <laughs> they ain't a part of that. That's a lesson within itself. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. It says, Eugenius, it says, well born <laughs> of a noble family, noble minded. Mm -hmm. Noble minded, man. Noble minded. Meaning we have a righteous mentality, so we we trying to learn ways to be able to govern, to judge in the kingdom, man. We're, we're being, this is preparatory school, so to speak. 
right. you know, right now, the things that we're going through right now, that's why we have to take it seriously. Go ahead. That's it. That's it, okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, but just bringing out the well water with the name Berea means uh, get that song on oh, first yeah. chapter. Yeah, I got you. You do, you got you got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because it just reminds me of, of, of the church, you know, which I'm grateful to be a part of this church, man, because we got the truth. I fully believe that, you know, through faith that the men that taught me, they got the truth. So I have the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. And it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, right. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So we're basically separating ourselves from this world, man, from false doctrines, mm -hmm. from everything that's against the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's why that persecution is going to ultimately come. But the Lord, he's going to make intercession for his elect. Go ahead. Come on, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Right. Occupied in prophecy. Meditating day and night, man. Until Yahweh Shah comes to perfect us, mm. this is the, the mindset that we have to put on more and more. Every brother, of course, in their own, you know, spirit and capacity. Yep. But go ahead. Come on, verse 3. This is the point. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water mm -hmm. that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Right, and you see the fruit of great millstone, man. Just by them, you know, steadfastly, consistently being out there teaching the correct doctrine, man. Look at the fruit. Right. And that's what a lot of people really, they bug out about. Like, we really serious, we repenting, Jake changing their whole life. Uh -huh. Like, we're a terror into this world, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And brothers are actively preaching. Right. That's we ain't just thing. in the video, then nope. you don't know where the who is that guy. Right, right, right. Brother, brothers doing, you know. Yeah, some brothers go out multiple times during the week, put their shows on top of that. Right. Just always something to go into. It's like we the news, really. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's his brothers always on the scene. If something come out as far as something happening in Israel, right, uh, Iran, yeah. brothers on the scene uh, breaking the, these things down through the prophecies, man. You know, when it's well watered through the spirit. Yeah. yeah, it's like a standard in Great Millstone that you got to make lessons. Right. You yeah, can't exactly. be amongst us if you're can't not doing work. Yeah, One, yeah. two, there's so many brothers in Great Millstone that put up lessons every day. Right. You actually can't watch all the videos that yeah. come out. It exceeds 24 hours. Yeah, you know, when you look at the other groups, they have their main, you know, their big five, their big wow. three, whatever. Yeah. You know, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah. But then you look at Great Millstone and this in a, a plethora of it's brothers a that are really doing it at well watered yeah. tree. You know, have it. Well, that's because they call us uh, faith based Israelites, right? We're taking Psalm 116, I believe, therefore, I have spoken. Mm -hmm. So it's not a burden for us to put in this work, man. Mm -hmm. It's our delight. That's yeah. it. Because we believe. Solid. Solid. I got a precept with the water. Yeah, go ahead. Are you done with it? Uh, there's a, I'm going to just finish. There's a little, uh, just a little more to this verse. And you okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. Mm -hmm. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And that's what's mm -hmm. happening through the spirit, man. We're not withering. The doctrine's getting like uh, stronger and stronger. It's like a juggernaut. The more people come up against it, the more powerful the how about Shimei was shot making this thing through the spirit? The more exposure, yeah. the more you try to push back on it. So you can't do nothing against the truth. Exactly, truth. exactly. Yeah. You know, because we're firmly planted, planted, you know, like a tree planted by the rivers of water, being well watered, you know, mm -hmm. just like the, the going into the church of Berea. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is John 7 and 38. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's I think that's the next one that I was going to call for, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you in the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it said, he that believed on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his bed shall flow rivers of living water. Right. And that's how you establish uh, faith and belief on who the world calls Jesus Christ. I was shot. It says, read it again. It says, John 7 38, he that believed on me, as the scriptures have said. Because everybody proclaims to believe in sweet Jesus. Yeah. But the, the true way, the biblical way to believe on the on who the world ignorantly calls Jesus is how the scripture says. Right. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, man. Like, we're apt to teach, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah setting up men on the earth to teach us, you know, and through your own diligence of study, you should be apt to teach. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks you a question about something in the Bible, at least on a basic level, because I know it's different levels to different brothers, you should be able to give an answer, mm -hmm. right? You know? Right. You say that. Yeah. yeah, and I got yeah. that too. I think I know what you I got one. Think about. Go ahead. Proverbs 18 and 4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom, yep, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. 
Yeah, I'll read it. Yeah. Proverbs 18 and 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Right. That's why it's truth, though. The, the world can't get it. It's too deep. That's why ultimately, you know, faith is a gift. You know, the Lord actually has to, really has to preordain you from the foundation of the earth to receive this thing, man. Mm -hmm. Even though the concepts and the things that we speak about amongst each other, you're sim simple to us, but these, this is deep water, mm -hmm. you know? This is a deep book, man. That's why a lot of people get drowned up, not knowing how to navigate the course of this Bible, you know? Uh, Somebody get that Romans the 15 or 14 or 5? 14 or 5, come. This is the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 5. And it reads, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Right, because people think like we're robots and zombies, like anything, everything that Apostle Taha, Apostle Gabar, you know, Apostle Ka, you know, Apostle Ramla, the bishops. Everything that they say, like we don't look into it, like we don't go back and study on our own, like we just believe wholeheartedly everything that they tell us, man. No, we have to ultimately be persuaded, fully, fully persuaded in our own mind that this is the truth, because mm -hmm. that's what establishes you in your belief. You know why you're in something, you know, yep. if it's based on you having your own conviction about it, yep. and that comes through the process of studying and being concealed in your own mind. Like, right. man, that's the truth, man. Yeah. I can't even try to come up against it if I wanted to. Right. You know? One of the things that drew me in was Apostle Hart was like, don't believe me, look it up yourself. And then on top of that, you got to be rooted by, on your own, in your own mind, because you're going to be tested with a different measure than another brother. That's right. That's right. You got to be built up for your test. Right. Because you can't coattail off of another man. You got to right. be rooted in it and stable in your own mind for your test. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right, brother. I got one real quick. 1 John 3 and 19 in the NLT, our actions will show that we, be belong to, we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before the Most High. Mm. That's a good yeah. verse was that? 1 John 3, I'll read it in the King James and 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall and, and show all assure our hearts before him. You know? how we know we're in the truth, man. Yeah. And it comes through that process, of course, of, of studying, reading the scriptures, prayer, you know. Uh, and a quick one. Go ahead. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. And that's the scripture I was going to call for next, uh, too. That's so. the yeah. <laughs> spirit, <laughs> spirit work. Yeah. Yeah. It says, study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Mm. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because hey, a lot of these guys are ashamed of Yahusha Mashiach who comes in the Bible. Yep. Right. What we was going to in the camp last night, you know, at the camp last night on the token of uh, virginity. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we'll talk but about that. You might call the nastiness of the scriptures. Right. Like, well, so here at Great Millstone, we go into those things. You know? Yeah, we ain't ashamed of it. Yeah. Right. And these dudes be getting confounded by these Christians, too. Yep. We ain't going to act like a lot of these Israelite camps. They're not assured. Not, right. They're out there winging it, wrong, mm -hmm. losing, stumbling, you know, like, come on, bro. They're not approved. Right. That's why you study to show thyself approved, man, that nobody can come up and gain say mm -hmm. and get confounded looking like an asshole, man. Yeah. You know, if we out there on the front lines, we got to be assured in what we out there speaking about. Yeah. You know. Part of yeah. studying, too, is that, like you study math, mm -hmm. you're given particular formulas to solve problems. Right. So you have to apply them. Oh, yeah. Part of studying is applying the knowledge and wisdom that oh, you've been yeah. given in your life. Yeah. And you see a lot of guys, you can clearly see they're not actually applying right. it in their everyday life. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yep. yep. what is wisdom? It's the application of the knowledge. That's right. right. You know, just applying these scriptures. Scriptures say, man, um, wisdom shall meet you in every thought. All right, so every situation we run into, man, we filter it through Yahweh Shah, which is, you know, the water. See? Right. So certain, you know, things within the scriptures just sound good to a lot of these guys, but they're not actually living. trying to put it in, you know, to practice, you know, being a living fulfillment of what's in the word. Just how Jehovah Shai himself was, you yeah. know, our greatest example mm -hmm. today. Continue. Yep, it says, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved yeah, unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh a workman that needed not to be ashamed, yeah. rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because like a lot of guys, we talk about precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. You got to know what precepts, 
you know, connect, you know, mm-hmm. to, to bring out a certain topic point or a certain breakdown. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. A lot of guys are teaching for filthy lucre's sake. You know, they're trying to pervert the doctrine. And like the elder said earlier, they'll go into Revelation 13. They'll have <laughs> verses 1 through 8, just like Great Mills thought. But yeah, then they yeah, get they down stop. to 10. Yeah. Then they just talking about the Roman Catholic Church, <laughs> like things that don't pertain to the true essence of what the scriptures is talking about. They're not, they not following Skip the around it. You right. know, you get a discussion guy, you're trying mm-hmm. to build something, get the paper. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I can do it myself. Yeah, right, because no, Isaiah 28 said, How can a man, you know, uh, what's say, um, let's say, uh, whom should I teach knowledge? Yeah. Whom should I understand and doctrine? Yeah. Those that win from America, precept upon precept, yep. precept mm-hmm. precept upon line upon line, here a little down a little. That's mm-hmm. the instruction. Yeah, that's right. You that's know? how the song is sung. Yep. All right, see, these guys, they might know the course, when you really get to the lyrics, you get to the song, nah, they, they mumbling. Uh, yeah, like, what you talking about, man? Yeah, yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Cause they're ashamed because they don't know the song and they don't know all the song. You know? That's a good analogy. Right. Yo, uh, verse 16 says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. Yo, like going back and forth with a nigga who we know ain't got the truth is really asinine at this point. That's why we're gonna just stick to the scripts. We ain't gonna get into all of these off topics, you know. Yeah. Cause he was preparing Timothy to go be head over the church of Ephesus. Mm-hmm. And he was basically letting him know the things he was going to be encountering and he was just like avoid all that you know that babble you know right. these niggas and that weird shit they do you mm-hmm. know avoid you know don't get caught up into that stick to the simplicity in your how was had, had an example yesterday Adam not talk about dude came up talking yeah. and shit yeah. he was like oh wait do you even believe in the bible dude said well no he said oh, well have a nice night <laughs> we don't got nothing to talk about yeah. right. you know <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll argue with you for. Exactly. It's no sense. <laughs> somebody that don't even believe. Now, I can see somebody that says they believe, even if they yeah. wrong, you yeah, can kind of deal with them. You can have a discourse yeah. at least, but you can't. Nigga that don't believe in words? Yeah, it's like, what am I wasting my time for? Yeah. Yeah. You're never supposed to get into it with a fool. That's yeah. right. Who wrote that Bible? Yo. Nigga, who wrote the Egyptian Book of the Dead? Because even that nigga Jason right. said, <laughs> if you argue with a fool, for people from a distance can't, can't tell who is who. Because yeah, right, you right. can't. Like, you just look crazy as hell. Yeah, public look stupid. He's a public stupid. He's a wise man once told me that. You know? Don't argue with fools. <laughs> yeah. But that is right, though. <laughs> like, if you from a distance. Away, if you see two niggas arguing, you don't know who yeah. wise and who foolish they in that bo- situation. They both just look like niggas. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In a nigga moment. Yeah, in a nigga moment. <laughs> Automatic stay away. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, if somebody can get that proper 14 and 15, and then somebody hold First um, Peter 3 and 14 on there. All right, this is Proverbs 14 and 15. It says, the simple believe of every word. Right. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. And that even applies to a lot of you Israelites. Y'all are right. simple as all hell, man. You know, yeah. even men in Great Millstone at times, man. Yeah. It says the prudent man does what? The prudent man... Look as well to his going. So it even extends uh, beyond just the scriptures. Yeah. Looking well into your going and all things. Because I was telling uh, Shahar earlier, Jacob posts an article, then investing and jump out there too fast without kind of betting what you just finna deal with. Cross you reference know? it. Right. <laughs> you, know. you just see it all. Oh, I ran and shot 300 <laughs> missiles, and you know, like you just finna run with it. It's World War Three, then popped off. Like, yeah. like, you just. Now you look crazy. Yo, yeah. Instead of being prudent and diligent. And, and really look into it a matter. And that can go for all things, whether you finish start a business enterprise, right. if you consider and bringing a woman into your life, mm-hmm. uh, whatever the case may be, man, you know? You've counted the cost. Right. That's you you had saying. a pulse on everything that, that, okay, this involves all these parameters. I'm, I've searched them all out. So when I go forward, I understand, you know, the consequences if I make these decisions. Mm-hmm. I'm not just out here yep. willy-nilly. Yep. That's right. You know? Well, the Hebrew word for that uh, is uh, shrewd. Uh, I rawam. It means uh, what's that? Uh, prudent. Mm-hmm. The Hebrew word is uh, I rawam. It says subtle, shrewd, crafty, sly, sensible, crafty. You have to be crafty. You know what yep. I'm saying? And you got to be shrewd, which the word shrewd means having or showing sharp powers of judgment, oh, astute. You know what I'm saying? On point. <laughs> you got yeah. to be on point. Because ultimately, yeah. that, like going back to that word noble, man, we're being raised up to be judges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a very high office, man, under Yahweh Hashem Yahweh of course. So we got to put on that preparation right now in, in every aspect of our life. Of course, 
and dealing with the doctrine yeah. and, and going to the scriptures and making sure we're apt to teach, prepared before we got on, go out on the highways yeah. and the byways, before we press start on these cameras, mm -hmm. you know? Being a judge is a very serious thing because people's lives are in your hands. Yep. You, yep. you make a mistake, mm. it's, it costs people their life. Yep. Hey, you know? Got something for you real quick. Yeah, we're seeing it, just right as too. an example, terrible leaderships of judgment and bad leadership. Mm -hmm. Like in Sakari, I just got to name them, man. Yeah. That whole thing is just falling apart just because yeah. just bad leadership and, and judgment. The leadership, right. they have proper judgment. They didn't look well until they're going. Yeah. You know? Like the ancient Sakari. Yeah. They right. weren't being prudent. <laughs> right. Well, the head of Sakari, the head of Sakari said his foundations are the streets. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Crip high mm -hmm. priest. Yeah, God, high God, priest crib. Back in exactly what you said, bro. This is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 17. It says, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, which that truth is righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it says, But a false witness deceit. So got to bear the right witness, you know, got to be the proper judge because a false witness ain't nothing but deceit going to come out of that. Mm -hmm. And what is deceit going to lead to? More chaos, mm -hmm. you know? And death. Yep. <laughs> That's right. mm -hmm. uh, can you read that in the NLT, that Proverbs 14 and 15? Yes. Is I got it. Okay. Proverbs 14 and 15. Only simpletons believe everything they're told. Right. The prudent carefully considers their steps. Right, so going back to the, the Church of Berea, man, only simpletons believe everything they're told. And that even goes to the majority of these people in Babylon the Great. They believe anything they see on TV, they see on TikTok, you know, they just like blind sheep, just believe everything. But those that are prudent, man, we gonna, we gonna consider the of everything, all the possibilities, we gonna really look into things, yeah. man. You gotta get the facts. You get the facts. Yeah. That's right. We actually think about when people do things, what is this person's motivation? Right. You know, they're not just finna take what they're doing for face value. Right. What are they he trying to do? just jump out there. Yeah. That's a judge, though. Right. Yeah. He's a judge, judge no matter. He look at all, uh, you know what I'm saying, shapes on fire. Like, he look at it like, okay, man, why this happened? Yeah. What's his mindset was? Yeah. Why yeah. did that happen? Trying to yeah. reverse engineer it. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's why we know when niggas pop out there and say, yeah, we got, you got this class. and this. Oh, this nigga trying to pad his lifestyle. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. selling Hebrew name. Yeah, we, 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 we all know his motive. We know his motive. We know his intentions, what he's trying to get out of this. So this we can nigga, point and say. This nigga's a high priest. He ain't sold us nothing. But <laughs> goddamn hoodies. He <laughs> can't get no showbread or nothing out of yeah, it. Flip flops. Oh my goodness. We can't get no showbread? You a priest should make that bread. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't need no hoodies. Everybody got a hoodie, nigga. Trying to make the other bread. <laughs> they push the law, but don't even push the law. Exactly. Right. 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 No yeah. uh, fashion of the law. Some, some yeah. anointing oil based on on the, you know they don't right. make none of that shit. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Like, we, like the Nazari or uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Alex, yeah. uh, he's talking about during the uh, the shock, he drank uh, honey, honey wine. wine. Like, yeah. show brothers how to make some honey wine. Yeah. Right, exactly. Do a honey wine video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Promote damn. it. Man. Be a priest. Yep. If you go and boast in that shit, let, let us right. see. Let us see. Go ahead, bro. Hey, I want to read this uh, word prudent if you don't mind. Get the etymology of it. It says uh, prudent from the late 14th century. It says wise, discerning, judicious. Judicious. Oh, mm. yeah, judicial system, you know, yeah, judge. Yeah, that's right. Lawyer, lawyer, mm. law. That's yeah. it. Go ahead. It says, from old French, prudent, with knowledge, deliberate. It says, knowing, skill, so, uh, sagacious, you know, which is keenly. Right, so you, in any situation you, you encounter or you, you find yourself in, you're able to maneuver and judge because yep. certain situations you're not going to be able to apply the 613 commandments or any of the law. Right. So you're going to have to what? Be in the spirit yep. and That's make right. a judgment that is, is, is geared towards life. Exactly. You, use wisdom. you know what I'm That's saying? Right. You got to use wisdom. Just ultimately just good decision making good just decision. to be practical in a practical sense. Just good decision making through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Based Ooh. on the things, everything that we've been taught and for certain situationals, you just knowing like yeah. which way to go. Yeah. You know the uh so like you know the account with King Solomon. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. the, uh, two women with the child. Yeah. The baby. Yeah. Yeah. He, he did that. Yep, yep, yep. That's, that's not something. in the six hundred and thirteen commandments. And that's right, right. But that and was that's a term judgment. <laughs> that they use in the court, even in contract law. They sure like do. whenever it's a negotiation sure. that's kinda of going uh uh what's the word, it's a standstill or stalemate in negotiation, mm -hmm. it's a term like if they got like an arbitrator or something, well, why don't we just split the baby? Mm -hmm. Basically you, you get something that 
uh, favorable to you, and the other party gets something favorable to them. A split decision. Right, like a split decision to a, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. So even in Esau's terminology and his courts and stuff, he's using biblical principles, man. Mm -hmm. You know? So that was wise of King Esau and how he did it. And he yeah. brought out the truth in that yeah. matter, too. Yeah. Yeah. By him doing something that seemed like very, uh, what's the word? Um, damn, what's the word I'm looking for? Hard. 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 Yeah. yeah. It, it was, was extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was able to discern yeah. spirits. He was like, yeah. the real mother would want the baby exactly. to live. If I do this, the truth won't come out in yeah. that situation. Because he knew that they were both their women. Exactly. They're going to act emotionally on the matter. And the baby and the woman is drawn, the real mother's going to be drawn to that child. So right. he knew the, the right. right thing to do in that moment. That's prudence. Yeah, right. 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 That's a great example, bro. Uh, was it more? Yeah, it says uh, sagacious, circumspect. Really, in literal sense, foreseeing. Right. Yeah, foreseeing, and, and through the prophecies, because that's another word for prophecy. To speak before, to say before. Uh -huh. You know, the Lord gives us certain visions to be able to speak on it before it actually happens, man. Right. With, matter of fact, it's a proverb that says, the righteous man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like Noah, that. he was being prudent. Right. He was acting on, you know. Right, because he had inside information on what was going to happen. Uh, in the future. Yeah. So he took he, it says, the scripture says he moved in fear. He took action yeah. through fear, you know, yeah. a prudent action, <laughs> you know, to save his, his, him and his family. Right. You know? It says really in literal sense, foreseen contraction of providence, it says present particle of providere, look ahead, mm. prepare, prepare. Right. supply, act with foresight. Yep. All right, so it's from the uh, from the pro to pro word is ahead, and uh, Gadir to see, so to see ahead. Mm. Right, so that's what we're looking ahead. Like like the scripture we read in Second Ezra, where pilgrims passing through. Why? Because we're already looking ahead towards the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to make certain steps so we don't get tripped up, so we can get to our final destination. All right, because we're we're looking ahead of the field. Like a good quarterback, he's always looking up the field. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do they call it? IQ. Yup, IQ. Yeah. That's right. You gotta be correct. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of do brothers. They they be, they know the scriptures, but their IQ be off. Yeah. Yeah. They be like, why you do that? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, bro, you gotta be, you gotta make better decisions. Yeah. Proof because they're simple still. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. trying to. Yeah. But they have to broaden. You gotta that learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 We, we all, all have to to yep. certain degrees, whatever the case may be. You grow out of that simplicity to start making wiser decisions. Right. You know that that affect your life in a meaningful, positive way. Right. You know. You got you got people in particular sports that are like super talented. Like, Damn, this dude can do everything. Mm -hmm. But he'll lose to the old head because the old head understands how to take care of the possession. Mm -hmm. You know, just how to be patient. Yep. You know how to make a simple play instead of trying to hit a home run every time. Mm -hmm. yeah, move when necessary. Move exactly. When necessary. That's right. Efficiency. That's right. And you'll see a lot of the older men, especially in Great Millstone, man, they, they'll they take elaborate topics and they make it plain. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to do too much. They just make it plain so people can understand and they keep it Right. Mm -hmm. And certain things that appear plain, they can make it appear deep. Just yeah. by just yeah. grabbing yeah. Just yeah. all yeah. the jewels and everything out of that, yeah. that, that yeah. topic. You Whatever know? the moment calls for. Right. They can right. do it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So that's what we're being prepared to do, man. You know, more and more have that foresight being able to make judgments because we're going to come into a time where the, the pace is going to speed up. Yeah. You know, like when you come from college to the, the league, they said with the game that speed, it, 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 it changes. So Everybody's decision-making is, is on point. Right. So, so your decision-making is going to have to adjust based on the pace of the, of the game at that yeah. time. Right. It's about to be game time. Yeah. You know? Right yeah. now we're just practicing going on the highways and the byways and these settings like this, putting up shows and, 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 and whatever. Mm -hmm. But... It's going to have to be actively applied when we're persecuted, when people are coming up against us. As Babylon in America is just going down the drain and we're losing and, you know, comforts right. is gone. You know, like those things, that, that, that foresight, that prudence is going to have to be applied, mm -hmm. you know, in, in game speed. Right, man. Hell yep. Man, the very next verse, though, in Proverbs 14 mm -hmm. um, and 16 in the NLT, the wise are cautious and avoid danger. Fools plunge ahead with reckless confidence. Right, and we're in the peril of our overthrow, man. It's like the scriptures talk about, man. Peril means danger. Mm -hmm. So those that are wise are cautious, meaning you take calculated steps. Because right. you, you know that there can be danger on one side or the next. You know? Oh, okay. I, I got the Proverbs 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reading NLT, Proverbs 22 and 3. It says, the prudent, 
person foresees danger and takes precautions, the simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Right. So you just, just, <laughs> just <put it. laughs> so you just gonna go in, into a bando just because you got a, 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 a semi-automatic weapon, but you ain't got no 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 shield or nothing yeah. on. You ain't gonna duck down. You just gonna go yeah. blindly, just straight up shooting. Yeah. You ain't gonna try to like squat down. You know, like Rambo, you just ran in there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this ain't no you gonna get lit <laughs> like that, man. Somebody that's waiting on you, they gonna just light you up. Jay just started shooting sideways. Yeah, <laughs> don't be calm. Yeah, you ain't like gonna try to like kind of tiptoe in. Right. You know, like <laughs> you, you ain't had no. You know, you see like the, the Navy, the SEAL Team Six. When they go into a building, yeah. it's been so tactical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have people with set parameters just to go, oh, this man falls, we set up in this way. You, right. They've taken the precautions yeah. to succeed. Right. You know. And they're taking their time, like, you go, like, sh- like, and, like it ain't no just random, just like, you just gonna run through their balls to the wall, just blazing. They're not being no niggas. Right. That's right. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think I called for First Peter 3 and 14. Through 15, Bible Kind of got it. Uh, this 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, it reads, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be, and be not afraid of, of their terror, neither be troubled. Right. So the scriptures talk about suffering as a follower of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. You know, we're, we're happy to suffer for, for righteousness sakes for Yahweh Shah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're happy to so-called take the low, turn the other cheek. You know, these people seemingly, they can do whatever they want right now. They can say whatever they want to say against the truth, pervert the doctrine, you know. But go ahead. Uh, I want to go back and read 13 real quick. It says, uh, 1 Peter 3 and 13, And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Right. Mm-hmm. That's Romans 8. Uh, what's that scripture say in Romans 8? Uh, who shall lay the charge to the Most High's elect? Yeah. But it's another way it says it too. I can't think of it. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. If 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 the Most High is with you, who can be against you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead. It says, "But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Mm-hmm. But sanctify the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in your hearts, mm-hmm. to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh." You a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And that's a, a, a key uh, uh, thing as to why the study and the diligence of going through the scriptures is, is, is important. So you can be apt to teach. You'll be ready to give the accurate answer also. Right. Especially for those Christians that may try to come up and make us look foolish. Mm-hmm. Nah, we're not dealing with that, bro. We can just deal with the basic precepts to cut up. Or they want to go into the Gentiles in yeah. uh, 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 era, and we can clean all of that up, man. Mm-hmm. You know, go ahead. Uh, verse 16 says, Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Hamashiach. Right, and the scriptures talk about uh, bringing like no offense that the ministry be blamed. You know, so that's right. why it's a, a, a heavy responsibility and how we deal with the doctrine and the word as well, man. Right. You know, that we're not uh, having laying any blame to the church, man. And more so in your, your code of conduct and your behavior. Yeah, we yeah. going out there speaking on certain things, but we can't get caught out there, mm-hmm. you know, right. at the strip club doing whatever, whatever, or whatever the case may be. You yeah, know, yeah, just caught out there bad to where it looks like the fashion of this world. Yeah, like right. the scripture says, uh, give no appearance of, of, it of says evil. Abstain mm-hmm. from all appearance of evil. Right. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You know. So that goes more so in the application of, of the, the things that we're learning and studying. Mm. Actually trying to incorporate those things in your life more and more. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to the Second uh, Peter one and ten. Second Peter. Peter's chapter one verse ten. It says, Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence mm-hmm. to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. That's right. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day, man. But it all starts with giving diligence because we can't coattail off of one another. You know, the Elder Yashua was he very diligent in the spirit, putting up videos daily. But just because you know him, you may be cool with him. You can't try to coattail off of his works. You got to put in your own work, man. You got to put in your own diligence, man. You know, to make your calling and election sure. If you do those things, you'll never fall off, man. You won't be a fallout. Yeah. Okay? 
And of course, there's different capacities within the body. Different measures. Yep. Different measurements of different brothers. Different gifts. Or well, whatever the Lord has put in your hand, run with it, man. You know, try to be excellent. Strive for the masteries uh, to the best of your ability at it, you know? Knowing that you'll never fail. Uh, see what else I yeah, that's what I say. What's that? Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter. You know, but let every man prove his own work. Yup, yup. You know, and then still he have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. First Thessalonians 4, all right. 9 right. and 12. We're all going to come down to the uh, the relationship, your rapport, mm -hmm. all right? The relationship you have built with your power, your high body, your high shot. That's right. You know? That's right. That's right. Bro. It's going to be about, yeah, you ain't going to be able to point the finger at nobody. Right. We all going to be judged based on, you know, our spirit. Ready? Yeah, whenever you got it. You got it. First Thessalonians 4, verse 9, it reads, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Right, and that's a big thing that's pushed in Great Millstone. Obviously, Paul said we shouldn't even he shouldn't even have to write unto you. Yeah, that, that should be second that nature. That should be second nature, right? Right. But if it's not second nature, you better start practicing it so it becomes second nature. Right. Because if you don't got that aspect right, most likely you're not a part of the elect. Yeah. Right. Just in that aspect right there. Yeah. Continue. Verse 10. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Because this thing is about increasing, man. We're in the growing business. I, I think I heard the apostle Bar says that. You know, we're in the growing business. We're trying to grow, grow, yeah. grow. So we have to put... We have to establish attributes within ourselves that are uh, conducive to growth yeah. in your own life and within the body. Yeah. Should we want to see the younger brothers under you growing in their own levels as well and up top? You right. want to help your superiors grow in their own levels too. Yeah. You know? Go ahead. Verse 11, it says, And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. This is Yahweh's business at the end of the day, but every brother, every laborer, we have to do our own business. We have to put in our own work. You can read it in the NLT when you finish too. All right, First Thessalonians four and eleven in the NLT, it says, "Make it your goal to live a quiet life." Right. So we shouldn't really be entangled with the affairs of the world like that. The scriptures talk about we use the world, but we don't abuse the world. Okay, you should make it to just a little quiet, boring life, a simple life. Yeah. You know, but Jake always got to have this <laughs> shit going well, on. Extra, man. Yeah. That extra. You want to yeah. you want to build your life around the ministry, which often the time may seem mundane. Right, right? it does boring. at times. But, but, you know, you know it's an investment for something much greater than anything you can have on this side. That's right. Uh, first that's Anybody that's really about, like, saving, because I, I, I used to be good at saving a lot of money. Saving. But it, it, it's, it's hard. You won't have to live simple life a lot. You can get to go out and eat. You gonna just have to yeah. just do a lot of mundane things yeah. or whatever it is. If you're trying to get a Success. certain type of body yes. type, yeah. you don't have to eat the certain type of foods every day. It's gonna become mundane. Monotonous yeah. is not yeah. gonna be fun. Su Success is boring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Success is really a, the people who you know they, they live a very mundane. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline. This, this is a very disciplined. You know. They're, they're one track minded. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So for, that's how we have to be in this thing, man. For the most part, you handle your business, go to work, deal with your family if you got that situation. Of course, we got recreational activities and stuff we do, but more so you should have a quiet life. You shouldn't have just too much going on, man, you know, because that hinders your growth in the work. Yeah. Go ahead. First Thessalonians 4 and 11 in the NLT, it says, Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business, and working with your hands. Right. Mm -hmm. Idle hands is what they say, the devil's playground. Mm -hmm. So you got to be working with your hands, with your own hands, man. You can't depend on another hand, man's hands for work. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we do use the body. The body is a beautiful thing. The brotherhood is a beautiful thing. But ultimately, it works better when you're doing what you're supposed to do. Now, the body as a whole, it operates at a higher level. Yeah. It's like the assembly line ain't got no chinks in it, so to speak. If everybody's at a high pace. Mm. Right now, the vineyard, right. we all labor, we right. all got a shovel, we all got some type of tool to do, to mm -hmm. do to produce. I'm saying the body will be high by small shot. Right. Say, yeah. it, it, everybody should be working. Like, even if you go to a construction site, if you just go and just go have a seat and just be a bystander at a construction site, it's a lot of moving parts. Everybody's doing something. Everybody you doing might something, have two yeah. guys 
They got like some lumber in their hand. Uh-huh. You got other guys, they, they moving a ladder, they moving equipment. So you got some guys, they laying beans. Yeah. It's everybody's doing something. But you got a laborer, this, huh? a laborer cleaning up and you know picking up right. the debris and everything. Picking up yeah. the trash. All hands on deck. They yeah. may be all doing different tasks, but it's all for the same uh, well, cause. The company. It's, it's, benefit, right. it's benefiting the company. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. building or project they're working on, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's for the same cause. Right. They have the same goal in mind. That's right. I sure do. This is Lamentation chapter 3, verse 26. And it says, It is good that a man should both hope Mm -hmm. and quietly wait for salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Just add it to the point. Just waiting on the Lord in humility. Not being extra, being over the top like a lot of the examples that brothers had mentioned a second ago. That's right. That's right. And you can you could use that to go into fact. There shouldn't be any gimmicks in the forefront of your ministry either. Exactly. It should just be clear cut what the word is. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you put gimmicks in front of it, you're gonna draw people in. That's not sincere. That's you're just right. you know asking for trouble, so to speak. Mm-hmm. If you bring in gimmicks, you're gonna have to keep coming with gimmicks. Exactly. And keep it up. Mm-hmm. I got a preach up. Mm-hmm. Nehemiah four and eighteen when they will be rebuilding the temple, it says, I'm reading NLT, Nehemiah 4 and 18, all the builders had a sword belted to their side and the trumpeters prayed, uh, the trumpeters stayed with me to sound the alarm because they were watching. Then I explained to the nobles and officials and all the people, this work is very spread out and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. So we got, there's a lot of work to do. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You got to work. It says, when you hear the blast of the trumpet rush, all right, to wherever it is sounding, then our God will fight for us. We worked early and late from sunrise to sunset, <laughs> and half of the men were always on guard. So it was a, it was a, it was a they were, you know, they were working. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it is now. We, when you build this too, you got to be, you got to always be working mm-hmm. in some capacity, you know. But the, you had a man yeah. also uh, observing and judging, too. Right. Probably security, just making sure right. nobody try to come hinder what's going on. Right. That has to be uh, considered as well. Right. And can somebody get uh, First yeah. Corinthians 3 and 10? This is how yeah. I'm prompt to. Because they're, they're building the, the, the temple. They're real building it. But then you got to also consider... You had people probably going out and getting stones and different things right. that were going to be inside the temple. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there was a whole, like, we rebuilding the temple. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, we got to get it back. Right. So it was, as they're building it, they got to watch. Yep. You motherfuckers coming to try to kill them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Stop them from rebuilding. It was, it was, a, it was a heavy duty. That's like, sure. That's like our elders, man. They want us so they don't get caught up in this. Right. Yeah. The scriptures say what? Uh, respect your elders. They watch for your souls. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? Same thing we going through right now. We're trying to build, but brothers got certain things on the outside that can hinder it at times. So yeah. we having to build and do other shit yeah, too. Right, but right. the thing is, we got to make sure we don't stop working. Yeah, that's you know, that's it. That's it. But First uh, Corinthians three and ten. Yep. This is First Corinthians chapter three verse ten, and it says, "I'm going to start at verse nine. It says, for we are laborers together with the Most High. Ye are the Most High's husbandry." You are the Most High's building. Right. Ultimately, we're the Most High's building. Go ahead. According to the grace of the Most High, which is given unto us as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Yo, so the point I want to get in that is it says, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. So while we're building, we also have to take heed how we're building. And then also, like it says in what Luke 14, it talks about counting the cost, mm. whether you have sufficient to what finish <coughs> the building. Mm. So with the, while we're building, you got to have the mindset mm. that you got to build with the right pace so that you can right. finish the building. You can complete your course. You know, that's all I wanted in that. OK. Um, let me see. It's only a few more. Um, let's get Philippians 2 and 12. And then somebody can also hold. Uh, First John 2 and 20. All right, this is Philippians 2 and 12. Our first Thessalonians 5 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have uh, always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, so it just, uh, 
just reinforcing that 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 point. Uh, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Of course, we're a body, but each individual part of the body has to function, has to be fully functional. All right, because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about salvation. The next brother can't get you on a chair, you. You know, you gotta make sure you're doing your own work. That you know, it be that the Yahweh Shem Yahushua may find it worthy to where you'll be delivered. <coughs> to make that call. Exactly. Make sure. like we were read earlier. That's right. All right. First uh, Thessalonians five. Yeah, five and twenty-one actually. And this first Thessalonians five and twenty-one, it said, "Prove all things." Hold fast that which is good. Hold on, I'm gonna pull you. Yeah, go ahead. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Right, so the first thing it says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So just bringing the point full circle, just going into the church of Berea, they searched search the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. Because ultimately, we're, we, we, we've been called to prove all things, man. And especially because this word I, I perceive through the spirit is gonna get more exposure. You know, it may be on like so-called mainstream media. So we got to make sure uh, as far as the doctrine and the, and the right teaching is concerned, we're proving our, our message. We're proving our faith. All right. Go ahead. Yep. And then it says, and to every power of peace, sanctify you holy. Read 22. So holy. 22. 22. Yep. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And that's what we had quoted earlier, man. Yep. So we can't be uh, linked in to the fashion of this world. Going out saying the things that we say, mm. we got to make sure we live a quiet life to where it ain't no mistake what we're about. Uh, you know, it says abstain from all appearance of evil. So even the example that Sakari, I got to keep bringing these guys, you know, up. They, during the Passover, it looks like they were getting bottle service and all that, right? Mm -hmm. True. Which, in of itself, that's, that may not be against the law, right? But the scripture says all things are lawful, but all things are not but that, But but there's a, you can also offend in the spirit. Right. Which is where you're not technically breaking the law, but you are in the sense that you're offending in the spirit. Yeah, you you're doing what you're causing a stumbling block for one. Right. Mm -hmm. When the scriptures say you offend the little ones, that means to put a stumbling block in their way. Mm -hmm. Right. So there, you are you are breaking the law technically. Kind of, kind of. You're just not breaking the, you, you, yeah. that's what Jake will say, well, what law did I break? That's, yeah. that's what they will yeah, say. There's an offense in the spirit as well, man. That's right. By doing things that aren't expedient. That's right. <laughs> And that's an appearance of evil. That's yeah. the point, man. Mm -hmm. that, that looks like the fashion of the world. It's like, mm -hmm. even though they may not be doing whatever, whatever, but someone who is uh, like a new believer that's trying to learn and come into this thing, they could be right. confused, man. Yeah. That could hinder their walk to right. where you have blood on your hands. Now, if you was just doing that in your daily life, right. we could be like, well, right. you know, that's what they do. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you link a holy day to that, oh, man. Then that's different. Like right. you, you nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what Jake was having sex in front of the temple. Eli's sons. Right. That's these guys, man. Yeah, yeah. They were in the temple having popping women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nasty work. So well, beyond the studying, it's, it's definitely how you live your life, man. We yeah. want to abstain from all appearance of evil. We don't even want if somebody, you know, to see us somewhere to second guess. Like, what? I, I, don't y'all go out there? Like, and, you know, they be confused. Right. By something in your life that's not lining up to what you preach about. Hmm. Go ahead. I don't know if I got this already. First Timothy 4 and 16 and NLT. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Hmm. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Yup. You want to add to the point? Yeah, yeah, just paying attention to how, how you live. Like I said, living a quiet life, not trying to put a stone and block in front of those, those that listen to you. You can have blood in your hands, or like your prophet says, you can be a prophet to those that hear you, but you can be the devil to yourself. Right. Which is, we saw a lot of guys like that had a lot of knowledge to teach and break down stuff and teach younger people, but they weren't living their lives correctly, and they end up not lasting. You know, so that's just if you don't listen to you and learn, but then you can get cast away because you're not living right, you know, you're not uh, moving around the spirit, you get proud of doing whatever, and then you get cast off. But everyone else that hears you, you can still be saved. That's right. Uh, well, I got a quick one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's saying John 5 and 39, where KJV and NLT, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them he think he had eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And the NLT reads, You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. Yep. You know? Because at the end of the day, that's who it's all about. It's mm -hmm. about Yahweh Shah, man. You know? 
the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. You know, his name is a nomen omen. Mm -hmm. You know, he is deliverer, he is salvation. You know, because that's the only way we're gonna ultimately get out of the grasp of our our, our, our mortal enemy, you know, is through Yahweh Shah. We're banking on that promise. Yeah. Okay? So everything uh, that he uh, embodies is within the word yep. that we're trying to live. That's how we get closer to him. Like it also says in Philippians, let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in him, Ashiach and Yahweh Shah. How we get into the mind of Yahweh Shah is through the word. Okay? And then more importantly, the application of the word to your life. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I call for? Um, right. I think, uh, let's see. First Thessalonians 5 and 20. Yeah, he already got that. Yeah. Get, uh, I guess I'm down to the last scripture. Get uh, 1 John 2 and 20. And then after this, just any precepts. All right. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's why you look up that word unction. Sure. Right, the word unction. Krishma. Charisma. <laughs> Uh, Krishma, it says, uh, anything smeared on, unpungent, ointment, the, the Holy Spirit, you right. know. Which ointment, it heals too, man, yeah. yep, you know, we've been healed through this word, yeah. you know. Yep, usually prepared by the Hebrews from oil of aromatic herbs, anointing was an inaugural ceremony for priests. Right, so this is duties within the priesthood that mm -hmm. were, uh, uh, conducting, you know, as far as getting into the word, mm -hmm. how we present the word, you know, it's particular. Yep, and that 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 is uh, symbolic of receiving the Holy Spirit, being anointed. Yep, it's symbolic of receiving favor from on high. That's what yeah. it symbolizes. Yeah, that's, that's that's what I'm thinking of it too. Yeah, that's it's the, sanctified. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's the you know what I'm saying. So you have an unction from the Holy One. You've been. Anointed. You've been anointed. <laughs> oh, yep, yep. It says a Strong's definition an ungent smearing, the special endowment of the Holy Spirit anointing unction. Right. Mm. So I'll, I'll hate to, for lack of a better word, like we've been initiated into the Holy Spirit, man, mm -hmm. through the word. Right. That anointing. Right. You know? And oil is a conductor of energy. You know what I'm saying? So the, the process of, as of anointing is, is high, highly spiritual with the different things they used to put in it. You know, that meant something. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. That symbolized something. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. And that's why we can boldly, through the spirit of faith, say, starting with our apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone, we have 100% truth, man. You know, because we've been anointed with the Holy Spirit, ultimately, which that should teach you all things, mm -hmm. you know? The spirit of truth, which should teach you all things, man. Uh, whether it be things uh, within the spiritual realm or whether the things within this practical or uh, carnal world. You know, you know we, we should be prepared to, to move in any situation, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so just going back to the, the, the point of the, the church of Barrel, they were noble, mm -hmm. meaning they were of, of, the, of a very high rank and yeah. uh, uh, esteem, yeah. you know. We got to have a, a, a royal mentality, a noble mentality, man, and how we approach all things, man. This is not a low-level book. So we have to come into that more and more, you know, into decision-making. And it starts through, the, you know, of course, the, the reading, the studying, meditating, the prayer, fasting when you can, and then just ultimately applying these things to your life, offending less, like we went into last night in the scriptures, because offense is going to come. We're still in the flesh. Right. That's why it says offend less. So, is there any other points or precepts? I got this rock and roll, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it, huh? Okay, then I read this. Is, uh, Colossians 2 and 6. As ye have therefore received from Mashiach Yahweh Shah the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established, established in the faith, as ye, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Right, abounding in thanksgiving as you've been taught, man. And like we started off, man, being assured in the things that you you were taught, and you gotta continue in those things, man. This is first Gen. I said first. This is Saint James, first chapter James. one, <laughs> man. Hey, man, you know, slip it up. <laughs> Saint James, chapter one, verse twenty-one, and it says, "Wherefore, 
lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Ooh. So just going into it, you know, putting on as the elect, as the scriptures say, these are the things that we ought to do. And we're in flesh, so, you know, we're surrounded by it. You know, but at the same time, being called in this ministry, we've been made holy, which means separated and ordained. That unction, as brothers was going into. You know, so this is a state of being that we must carry on to be that mere reflection of Yahweh Shah on earth. Yeah. Right. You know? And you got to receive it with meekness. Right. right. Because there's a the meek, you know, to be meek, you know, is to accept what the Lord is doing. That's right. You, you, don't, right. you don't buck up, you know, Jake. They don't want to deal. They don't want to accept what the Lord. You know, the word for meek uh, is praus in the Greek, and I'm gonna just read this. It says, "Meekness towards God is that disposition of His Spirit in which we accept His dealings with us as good, no matter if it's good or evil, <laughs> and therefore without disputing or resisting." You gonna say something? I was gonna say Romans eight and twenty eight. Yeah. You know, all things working for good to them. You know, for them that love that. Matter of fact, can I read it? Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to them who are called according to his purpose. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you know we're going to be chastised in this thing, man. You know, the Lord is going, you know, he's going to whoop us. Yeah. All right? Yep. We're going to go through hardships, trials yep. and tribulations, you know. Hey, but... Take it cheerfully, man. Like yep. it says in the book of Surah, the second chapter. It's yep. like the mindset Job had in the set, Job 2. Yeah. With his wife, he said, shall we receive good from the Lord and not evil? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. But, you know, whether it's good or evil, you receive and it's always righteous. Yeah, let me Lord. finish this. Yep, it says, in the Old Testament, the meek are those wholly relying on the Most High, Ba'ashim Yahushai, rather than their own strength to defend against injustice. Thus, meekness towards evil people means knowing the most high is permitting the injuries they inflict <laughs> he is using them to purify his elect and that he will deliver his elect in his time and you you subject to that yeah. you know what I'm saying faith to be patient enough yeah. to just let's see it through Take it. like know that the Lord is working he's doing his bid and just allow it to happen man. Ooh, and just try to conform to what the Lord is doing you know like it says in what Romans the 12th chapter yeah, yeah. You know, be not conformed to this world, but yeah. um, be transformed, be transformed by the renewing mm -hmm. of your mind. So coming out of this world, we have to change the way we look at things, man. Because nobody likes to suffer and just go through discomfort like, intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can avoid it, like, but we have to retrain the way we think. Like the Lord is really building us up and preparing us for something greater by having to take the low, by being a part of what looks at as lowly and downtrodden right now. You know, mm -hmm. the, the trial of your faith, working patience. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah, but the water y'all about you know, for the apostles and elders. You know, yep. one thing that Apostle Cabal always goes into, what is this truth about in a nutshell? It's about suffering. It's about suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, for righteousness sake. That's, right. that's patience. That's what that word, it, it yeah. breaks down to. So, yeah. the suffering. The path back to immortality comes with a price oh, yeah. that we have to pay. We, we're subject to it mm -hmm. until the Lord redeems us from it. We're subject and we have to rejoice him the whole time. You have to fall in love with the process. Right. Yeah, yeah. But it says, uh, for your light affliction, working for you a more yeah. eternal way to glory. Ooh. Right. Yeah. And before honor comes with humiliation. humiliation. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to get to that noble, back to that nobility. Right. It's going to come through that process right. of being humiliated. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 Uh, Hebrews 12 and 9 and 10. Uh -huh. Furthermore, we, we have had fathers of our, of our flesh which corrected us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father's spirit and live? Mm -hmm. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, mm. that we might be partakers of his holiness. You know, so that, that correction is for our benefit. Yep. You know, so that's why you want to rejoice in it, because it's not to destroy us, it's not doing anything malicious toward us, it's for our, for our benefit to get back to his good graces and his yeah. holiness of salvation. Trials, that's all given. You got to take it. You know, I said take a trip. With you, guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You got to not follow my temptation. You got to yep. take a trip. Yep, yep. Yeah. Because yeah. the most high love in whom he what? He chastised. He's dealing with you as a son. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And there's lessons in all. You just got to find a lesson in it. Right. You know. well, happy right. is the man who the most high corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. yeah, we, we haven't been perfected yet. So let's always. Uh, so now comes, things 
that need to be sharpened up mm -hmm. in our character and our spirit. So even if you feel, you know, it could be justified, like maybe somebody coming at you in the wrong way, when you feel like you ain't do nothing, but you gotta look at it spiritually, like the Lord right, yeah. is, is doing it for a reason. So let me just, through meekness, just allow the Lord to just deal, mm -hmm. you know? Like I said, lessons turn to experience. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Don't try to justify yourself ultimately, you know? And the other points, precepts, so, hey, with, with that being said, Lord willing, this was edified to the body. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, by Shira Kakadash. No honors to our apostles and elders, bishops of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect. Till next time, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.